Hey, what's going on guys? This is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. This is part three of my series where I rank champions on a tier list based off of how fun I think they are. This week we'll be doing the damage class since they're up next when it comes to alphabetical order. Surprisingly, there are no damage champions whose name starts with A. Uh, the only two classes that have it are of course the flanks and the tanks. Kind of interesting. But yeah, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure to drop a like and subscribe so you never miss an upload from me. And also, if you haven't already seen the first two episodes in this series where I go over the flanks and tanks, make sure to go watch those if you want to see my opinions on them. Also, like I did in the other two videos, I want to give a shout out to Frostfangs for inspiring me to do this tier list because he's the guy who did it first when it comes to ranking champions based on how fun they are on a tier list, at least when it comes to paladins. And so I kind of wanted to do the same and give my own thoughts because my opinions are very different from his. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and start ranking the champions. Alright, so I'm going to give you a guess as to where I'm going to place this guy based off of my intro. Gonna go in D, gonna go in C, gonna go in B maybe? No, of course he's going into S. Come on, it's me, the guy who has Bomb King, like level 220 something? I, I play a little bit of Bomb King, to say the least. Um, he definitely goes in S for me. He's been there pretty much throughout my entire Paladin's career. I remember I started maining the guy after I got completely crushed by a Bomb King on Payload back when that existed. Oh god, I wish they'd bring that back. But yeah, Bomb King. I mean, he's just amazing. He's so much fun. Uh, I know him like the back of my hand. I can play him very well, and he just, he flows so well for me. I like detonating things and having that control over my projectiles. It's like when I explode them, where I explode them, I can chain stuff onto tanks. His kit is just, it's super nice, super fun to play with until I go to Europe and then have a million ping, or rather just like a hundred ping, and it still screws over Bomb King. But yeah. You know, on NA, which is where I play 95% of the time, yeah, this guy is a beast. He's so much fun, and I absolutely love him. Next up is Cassie. She is very fun to play. She's one of the most chill damage champions, honestly. You just kind of sit there, you shoot things, you've got a very simple kit, don't really got to worry about anything complex. Just focus on aiming and using your combos, and you're going to do well. And because she's so relaxing and so much fun, I think she's a solid A tier for me. I mean, she's just... It's nice, you know? She's Cassie. You can bring her into any situation, she's gonna be good, she does damage, she's great against everybody, and she's just, she's awesome. So, Cassie, easy A tier. Dredge is coming for your booty, cause he needs to shove this milk down something. And he's also, um, a champion on the tier list, and I'm not sure where I want to place this guy. Uh, he's more fun than some damage champions, I will admit, but he's certainly not someone I go to very often. Even on, like, Ice Mines, like, where he's the best, I still sometimes prefer other Blast champions, you know, like Bomb King. Uh, so I just, I'm not really sure where I want to put this guy. He has some interesting stuff to him, and when you hit your shots consistently, it's very satisfying. Uh, I think I'll just rank him in C. He's not, like, someone I pick up decently often at all, so it doesn't warrant putting him in B. But I certainly wouldn't say he's a D-tier champion. I mean, he is still fun enough uh, to where I can still enjoy him. Whereas the champions I'm going to put in D, I pretty much just never ever enjoy. All right, now we move on to Drogos. Oh my goodness, this is another easy top tier for me. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put him in A tier above Cassie. I absolutely love Drogos. It is so much fun to fly around, blast things. His combos are great. His damage and burst is great. The one thing holding him back from S tier for me is the amount of counters you have to deal with as a Drogos player that are just irritating to no end. Like, every, almost every single time I lock in Drogos, it feels like I'm going against an Androxus player, or a Leon, or someone else who can just blast him and make his life pain. So, and not to mention, on some maps, he just really sucks. Like, on Ice Mines, yeah, his combustible spam and stuff is cool, but he can't fly. And pretty much closed-in corridors are a death sentence for Drogos, and that's just really, really annoying, and I don't like that. And so, not only is he a bit map dependent, but also just those matchups can be irritating to deal with. But still, most of the time, I find myself absolutely having a blast with this guy, especially on maps like Splitstone Quarry or Serpent Beach or, you know, Ascension Peak, where he's just awesome. So, yeah, another easy A tier for me. Okay, next we move on to Amani. Now, Amani is someone who I didn't really care for much up until I started the grind for her gold skin a few months ago. And she is actually a very fun champion. She's got a very interesting and fun and original kit. The one problem with Amani, though, is the amount of bugs that this champion has. Like, sometimes I'll activate Inferno Cannon, and it just, like, won't do damage. It'll play the animation, but it won't do damage. And that's even on good ping, like 16 or 30 ping or whatever I get on North America. So, that's pretty bad. I think there's also a bug where, like, her Inferno Cannon is slower 
when you're in the sky versus on the ground, which can just get you killed because you're very, very easy to hit setting target. She doesn't apply Cauterize on Inferno Cannon either. I mean, Inferno Cannon just feels like a whole weak ability, if you ask me. Controversial opinion, I know, but it's actually pretty weak. Like, it does less damage per second than Victor's Rifle. Yeah, it gets you flight, which is cool. But less damage per second than Victor's Rifle. No Cauterize application. Obviously, you can shoot them and then hit the Inferno Cannon. But, like, still, Cauterize is going to run out pretty fast. And it just it doesn't really do enough damage, in my opinion. Honestly, I don't think the damage nerf was needed that she got a few months back. Partially because Inferno Cannon just doesn't work sometimes. So, until they fix the bugs, I think she's going to remain in B tier for me. Definitely someone who I will pick up from time to time and who I enjoy. But bugs really hold her back. Next, we move on to Kinesa. Kinesa is definitely my favorite of the two snipers. I'm just going to say that right now. But the sniper playstyle just really isn't for me. Scoping in feels awkward, especially like the closer you get to someone. And I just don't really like that feeling. I don't really like sniping in general, like sitting super far back, having like get weird lines of sight and stuff like that. It's just it's not the most fun. Uh, but I still sometimes pick Kness up, especially on maps where she has an advantage, like Timbermill or Frog Isle, just because it's a sensible thing to do, and, you know, she isn't, like, pain to play, I'm not gonna say that. So I think Kinesa's gonna go in B tier, probably above Imani, just because, you know, at least she doesn't have bugs. Unfortunately, though, Kinesa does have only two talents, which, you know, that's unfortunate. But we don't talk about that, let's move on. Leon. D. <laughs> Okay, now, let's, let's actually be fair about this for a moment, okay? I know that you all know my stance on auto-aim. I hate it. I can't stand it. It's a stupid thing. It ruins champions like Eevee who just want to have a good time and, you know, fly around and be evasive because being evasive is how you stay alive with Eevee and then Leon just shows up and is like, Pew! I don't aim at you, but I'm going to hit you anyways. Ha ha! Unavoidable damage. Woo! I'm so good. But... <clears throat> To the credit of Leon, she has a very smooth kit to play as. Playing Leon is enjoyable. You know, when it comes to like just dishing out damage, being bursty, getting things done, and overall just how the kit flows, she's not like, you know, she doesn't have like a lot of lockout, she's not, you know, rigid, she's not, you know, unflexible. She can, it feels pretty good to use. Unlike someone, you know, like Atlas, for example, where you have a lot of lockout, long cooldown, stuff like that. So, I do have to give her credit on that. Also, the change she got recently to her cooldown reduction card, where previously you would be able to get cooldown reduction on all of your abilities if you got an assist, now it only applies to killing blow, that has actually raised the skill floor for her a bit. So, the bad Leons were even worse now, and the good Leons are pretty much just as good as they were before. So, I do like that, and I think if they keep doing changes like that to Leon, She'll be, you know, a, a better champion in my eyes to play against and both to play as as well. So I think for me, we're going to put her in B probably like in the middle. I could put her above Kinesa just because I don't like Kinesa. Well, I, I like Kinesa, but I don't like snipers and Leon's not a sniper. Also, Leon's made me a crap ton of money. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, every time I play this champion, something magical happens. I got a Nana kill with her. I got paid $69 to get to, to, get, to get her to level 50. I mean, this this champion has given me some good stuff. Yeah, I'll put her... I'll, I'll leave Rigby. <laughs> eh, you know what? Because of that... I mean... We could justify putting her in A. You know? That, that could work. And then... Ah... Because of Reem, I know I know Reem is watching this. I, I know I know she's watching. We could we could we could do this. Hmm. Do I? Yes, you don't want to make me mad. You now, do you? Respect? What are you waiting for? I'm not for? a patient woman. Oh God. Okay. No. No. I forgot how annoying she is in terms of her personality, and. She does have auto aim. Okay, no, back, back, back down to B. Back down to B you go. <sighs> Alright, next up we go to Octavia. Octavia... Uh, I mean... She does have a gun. And that makes her completely unoriginal. Because there are lots of champions with guns. Relative to the other champions with guns... I don't really like her gun. Like... <laughs> 
Uh, so first of all, when you use your unscoped shots, you have a similar fire rate to like Strix's pistol, or Lex's pistols, or even Tyra's uh, assault rifle. But you have to semi-auto the entire thing, not to mention the ridiculous spread that it has. That's really just dumb and annoying, and I don't like that. And then when you scope in, the scope is pretty robust, it's pretty big, and sometimes it can feel awkward to handle, especially with certain skins that change the color of the reticle, because you can't manually change the color of the reticle when you're scoping in. So some reticles, like the red reticle, you know, they kind of blend in with enemies or terrain and can kind of make it harder to aim. So I don't really like that at all. Um, and also her abilities are just kind of eh. I mean, Distortion Field, sometimes it feels like it's helpful, sometimes it feels like it's useless. Her jump, uh, it's good on some maps, bad on other maps. Passive, it's okay. Her passives are okay. Uh, I'd rather just play Ash from Overwatch. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I, I really would. I'm just going to leave her in C tier. And you know what? I'll put her below Dredge because at least Dredge is more original. And also, <laughs> I, I, I sometimes pick up Dredge exclusively just to play with a gold weapon. That's another reason I think I should put him above Octavia. Like, <laughs> he has a sick gold weapon. And when it comes to the fun aspect, for me... That makes him a little bit more fun. I don't know if I'm just the only one who thinks that, but yeah, his gold weapon makes him a bit funner for me. All right, next up is Shaolin. Oh, the champion who I have continuously throughout my Paladin's career tried to get good at. I have wanted to like this guy for so long. Because when I was a kid, I used to, like, really love archery. I remember going to a, an, archer, an archery range and just having fun with the bows there. I remember making a bow out of some sticks and rubber bands in the backyard. I liked bows. And so I thought I would like Shaolin when I first started this game. I tried to pick him up. I tried to learn him. I've kept trying to learn him. I've kept trying to have fun with him. It just, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. <laughs> and I feel really bad about this. It doesn't happen. And... Like, my KDA with Shylin, he's the only champion in the damage class who has a KDA below 2 for me. He has one of the worst win rates of all my champions. I don't know why, man. More than 50 levels on this guy. I still just... I can't get him down. I understand how to play him. I just can't hit shots to save my life. It's just... Uh... I, I want to like him. I just... I can't. I can't. Just, he makes me sad. Let's stop talking about him before I get depressed. Moving on to the worst of the two snipers, Strix. I never pick this guy up. Like, ever. If I'm sniping, it's Knessa or nothing. The only time I play him is when someone on stream forces me to play him through the champion request. And I, I pretty much never have fun. Like, almost never. His sniper feels clunkier to me than Knessa's. His pistol is objectively weaker than Knessa's carbine. Like, it's objectively worse. Worse DPS. You have to switch for that, which means it takes less... Or it takes more time to switch to your sidearm than Knessa's. Like, Knessa, you just stop holding right-click and then you can shoot. Strix, you have to switch stances completely. And then he has no movement ability on top of that. He's extremely farmable. And I feel that whenever I play him, and whenever I play against him, he's super farmable. So, yeah, he's going to chill right beside Shaolin in D tier for me. Tiberius! Okay, now this guy, aesthetically, he is such a cool champion. I really like this guy. When it comes to, you know, visual, sound design, stuff like that, they did such a good job on him. And I've wanted to play him for that reason. But whenever I play him, I just get really bored. Like, his primary fire is basically Cassie's, but even easier to hit. And then he has an ability which makes him have Cassie's primary fire, but faster. And then he has his leap, which is, you know, generic leap. And then his ult sometimes is impactful, sometimes isn't. And then, of course, he has his sword throw, which, you know, you pretty much only use the one talent for him, which makes the sword explode. And you can only do that combo so many times before you get bored, honestly. He does have a really wicked gold skin, though. I love his gold skin, especially the purple effects on the shotguns whenever you throw those and they explode. Or rather, they expire. But, I mean, aesthetics aside, it's kind of boring. I think I'm going to put him above Octavia. Just because, he, again, he is a bit more original than Octavia. And a bit less clunky than Octavia. And I just see myself picking him up 
slightly more than her, but I still rarely pick him up. But I'm still not going to put him in D tier, because I do at least have some sort of fun on him. Whereas these two? Oh, definitely not. Tyra. Alright, this is an easy A tier. Easy, easy A tier. Tyra's my go-to girl when it comes to ranked. Like, whenever I need to carry in ranked, whenever I need to do damage, get kills, get things done, she's who I play. And I find her damage to be really, really satisfying to use. Like, melting tanks with Tyra is one of my favorite things to do. Like, play Tyra into Yagaroth. Oh, it's just... It's amazing. It's amazing. And she's another one of those jack-of-all-trades. Kind of like Cassie, who's just really good in any situation. Like, she's hard to flank with a mercy kill build. She's good against tanks. She's good against squishies. She's good against everybody. And, of course, you have that supportive build, too, when you're playing in a party. Uh, ideally, you'd play this in a party. I mean, you could do it with random people, but... When you're in a party, when you're coordinated, you can go hunting party and just help your teammates light things up. And that's really cool too. So, an easy A tier for me. Uh, I think I'll do this. Just because that ranked factor, I find her, I find myself picking her up more than Cassie. Although I could still play Cassie in ranked. Uh, it's just, yeah, she's more reliable. So, yeah, easy A tier for me. And next up is Victor. The unoriginal character who is intended to be unoriginal. So, you can't blame him for it. He's that guy who's there as an entry character. And he's also very chill. Kind of like Cassie, he's who I want to pick up whenever I just want to chill. Not really think, and just like kind of focus on aiming, and you know, relax. And he does a good job of that. I have him at a high level because of that. Like, whenever I don't know what to play, whenever I just want to chill. Victor. So, I think I'm going to slap him kind of just in B tier. Uh, do I put him on bottom B tier? Okay, I think we're going to have to rework B tier a little bit. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. There we go. Because <laughs> uh, I think Amani is more fun to play than Victor, absolutely. And I think Victor, the chill factor, puts him above Knessa for me. Because again, Slamber play style is just not really my thing. And yeah, Victor, he's just kind of chill. Next, we come to Vivian, who is so chill that she requires one singular brain cell to play. Because if you had zero brain cells, you'd be dead. So, let's slap her into the D tier. Basically Victor, but if Victor sucked, and if Victor was even more boring to play, to the point that he wasn't relaxing, he was just, like, mind-numbing. That's what Vivian is. Her one saving grace is that she has really good build diversity. You can make a plethora of different builds for her, and that's pretty cool. But it doesn't change the fact that she has a gun. Her second ability is to scope in on the gun. Her ultimate ability is to add more damage to the gun, and then her other abilities are to reveal people so you can find them, shoot them with her gun, and then put a shield up so you can shoot people with your gun for a longer amount of time before you die. She, she is gun. Ah, she's so boring. <laughs> and she slows herself when she shoots too, so that adds to the just drollness of it, where... You know, at least with Victor, you're a bit more fast-paced. You can walk at full speed. Uh, Vivian's a champion. And finally, Willow. <laughs> I don't really like a lot of damage champions, I'm learning. As, as I've been doing this tier list, I've just realized how many damage champions I don't actually like. <laughs> like, relative to the other classes, I guess damage class is probably, like, my worst when it comes to champions I enjoy. I will say I enjoy Willow more than Vivian, but she's still just such a, just, eh, she's a meh champion. She has a really cool kit design, but the numbers just make it feel awful. Like, yeah, she has her Blast Flower play style, where you can ramp up the damage, and then also give you damage reduction on your flutter and whatnot to make her a little bit tanky, and yeah, that's cool and all. Except it's not. <laughs> like, she does 666 damage per second. At base. That's less than Torvald. If you want to use any of her other two talents, you have to be doing 666 damage per second for the rest of the game. That's awful. That's a that's a damage champion doing less damage than every other champion in the damage class, and even like a good third of the tanks. That's awful. That's awful. <laughs> Uh, her seedling is completely ineffective unless you use Scorn. Like, when are you ever catching someone in seedling? Unless you're doing, like, seedling into a Sarasult or something? And even still, like, without Scorn, it just does kind of poo-poo damage. Like, it does some good damage if you have all of the seedlings hit the same target. But who's going to stick around for that long? <laughs> it's, just, it's not a very good ability unless you use Scorn. Dead Zone is kind of like her one good ability. Yeah, it covers a big area with an anti-heal. That's really good. 
And I guess that's kind of their justification for giving her low DPS. But the problem is, like, even if you dead zone a champion, say, like, you dead zone Cassie, and then you start to duel her, even without healing, that Cassie's still gonna beat you. Same applies for Bomb King, Drogos, Tyra, Leon, Imani, Victor, Kinesa, Dredge, assuming he hits his shots, Tiberius, Octavia, Chalian, Strix, maybe not Vivian. <laughs> and that's not even to mention a 2v1. It's, it's just the numbers on her make her feel really weak to me. And I don't like that. I'd rather just play Drogas, honestly. Like, she's just... She's weak. If they t if they changed her numbers around, gave her a nice rework on that, like, maybe made her weapon shoot faster, that could be a way to fix things. Then she'd feel a little bit better to me. But in her current state, ugh, I just... I can't stand playing her. Hello, this is Andrew from the future, who was in the middle of editing his video when he realized that for some strange reason on this, on this tier list, Sati isn't an option at all. She doesn't exist. I don't know how, all right? It, it makes absolutely zero sense. Like, let's check this out. I, I, have, I have a folder of every single Paladin's Champion's face, right? Just because I needed it for, you know, the randomizer and also it's just helpful. And yeah, Sati's right here. I just, I drag and dropped this, uh, this whole folder, pretty much everything. I just went like, whoop, dragged it into the tier maker and Sachi's not there. I have no idea why. I have no idea how that happened. It's not like it's an invalid file. It's Sati.png, Ruckus.png, Saras.png. It, it, it just didn't happen. I, it didn't work. I don't know why. So if we were going to rank Sati on, onto this list, um, let's just use Sky as the closest example of where Sati would be. I would have to say Sati probably goes in the bottom of B tier, just because she has a very, very satisfying pistol to use. Her abilities are helpful for cover denial and stuff. But honestly, I'd rather just play like any of these other champions. They're just a, more fun to me. In fact, I might put her above Kinesa, just because I would rather play her above Kinesa. But all these other champions, they just are a little bit more fun to me. Sati just strikes me as one of those like mid tier champions where like, you know, aiming, that's a thing you do with her that works you're going to do well but she's not like gobs and gobs of fun like you know drogos for example so yeah absolutely sorry about that i have no idea how this happened but yeah don't worry i didn't forget saucy she just i don't know tier maker broke blame tier maker but anyways i hope you guys have enjoyed if you have make sure to drop a like on this video subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload from me i'll be releasing the final part of this series in one week from now next wednesday so stay tuned also make sure to check out the discord server and the twitch channel both of which are linked in the description we have a wonderful active community of people on discord who play paladins overwatch smite and more so go check that out if you want to make some friends also on my twitch channel i stream regularly in fact i'll be streaming today as this video releases well not when this video releases, but like a few hours from now. So yeah, go check me out. I'm probably streaming live if you're watching this video within a few hours after release. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.